So thank you for joining our webcast today. My name is Darren Hermans. I'm a product manager with Cambium Networks. I work in our enterprise uh, wireless business unit, but that really involves a lot of different things. And as we're going to see today, talking to some of these MSPs, uh, really, it's it's a it's it's more than just wireless. It's it's quite a bit bigger market than that. So we're talking to MSPs, and we we should first answer that question: What is an MSP? A, a managed service provider. Well, it's an easy acronym to say, right? Managed service provider. A little harder to pin it down, a little harder to define what exactly an MSP is. Oftentimes, an MSP is, is, a, is a technology advisor. They're a trusted advisor. You're going to see that today in this podcast when we talk to these two gentlemen. An MSP covers a wide area of expertise. They generally come at the problem with, uh, with a lot of background, a lot of experience. And at the end of the day, as you're going to see today, an MSP really uses technology to really benefit their customers and make their customers network better and uses technology really to support what is a modern business. And that's what uh, we're going to be talking about. So joining us uh, from across the world, we have Igor Kurtovich from Netsys in Germany. They're in the Ruhr Valley. Uh, Igor, please introduce yourself. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, how long you've been doing wireless and just... Uh, Take it away, Igor. Well, welcome. First, um, I'm in the business for roughly 25 years. Um, in the wireless business for more or less 15 years, that is basically when I switched my companies from uh, my old uh, employ employer to, to Netsit, uh, where we started consulting in infrastructural services, um, big sourcing agreements and all that stuff. And um, the wireless was always part of it. and, and uh, this is where I started uh, deep diving into the wireless world. Yeah? Um, it so you started out. You started out with carrier network. So why did you uh, switch over to uh, the service provider network? Well, yes, um, I, I was working long time at a, at, at a German carrier, and, and obviously, uh, I mean, honestly, I got bored um, of the technology speed. <clears throat> there was no, for me, there was no bigger change other than 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 uh, upgraded bandwidth on the links and all that stuff. Um, there were some technology jumps in the past uh, when MPLS started, um, the next generation networks, when the carriers switched over to all IP, um, went away from their, from, from their ATM networks and all that. That was, a, that was a challenging time. But after that, it was more or less only changing, simply set GBICs to higher speeds and that's it. Yeah? And that got boring at the end. So um, I decided, okay, I have to change something. Yeah? And um, that's where I landed at the NetSit, which is founded by a core of people from the same carrier so that's how i landed there and uh, we started consulting other carriers companies and whatnot so you you picked wi-fi well you know you, you pick the technology that's not only fast growth but uh it's it very fast evolving isn't it it seems, seems like every every five years we get a brand new technology and we we think we have it all figured out and then we got to start over again we're going to we're going to hold that thought we're going to talk about that a little bit later uh, before we move on, let's talk to Will Clifford from Montgomery Technologies. They're based in San Francisco, California. Will, tell us about yourself and um, what's Montgomery Technologies doing? What market do you guys play in? Great. Thanks, Darren. Uh, thanks for having me join today. I'm Will Clifford. I'm a National Building Technology Manager for Montgomery Technologies in our division Intelligent Riser. So it's my job to ensure that owners and operators nationwide can achieve you know, their, their smart building goals you know, that includes cybersecurity protection, definitely cost savings, newfound efficiencies, and enhanced productivity through base building system infrastructure. So you guys are based in San Francisco, Will. Where else do you, that, that, that's a pretty high rent market. You know, um, people have heard about the real estate price, uh, you know, of uh, residential real estate in San Francisco, and it, it certainly translates into commercial real estate as well. Um, that's, a, that's a challenge. Sounds like a challenge, though. Yeah, our, our core focus is commercial real estate, high rise. Um, you know, it, it, it is ranging. All buildings have some sort of building network within them. Um, kind of the focus was the CBD of San Francisco and uh, ensuring all those buildings were protected, um, especially branching from we were a riser, we are a riser management company as well. So that was our headquarters, our bread and butter, and where we started with uh, base building security. And you get and you guys operate across uh, not just in San Francisco though. You're a nationwide carrier, nationwide provider. 
Yes, all the way to New York City and up north to Washington and down south as well. Yeah. Good. That's good. And those are all interesting markets, all a little bit dynamic, a little different, but then there's a lot of commonality. Um, so let's go back to Igor a little bit here. Igor, um, you know, you've, you've been, uh, you've, you, you're the guy who's kind of, you've seen a little bit of all these things. I like the fact that you said you were bored with uh, working in carrier networks and wanted some new challenges. So, so where have you seen these changes? You know, you joined, you've been in enterprise networking and uh, carrier grade networking, uh, carrier network design, enterprise network architectures. Uh, what, do you, what are you seeing in the changes and what have you seen, where have you seen some of the biggest changes? Well, to me, the biggest changes actually are really in the, in the wireless area. This is uh, this is the technology that that moves, from my perception, the fastest way, and um, uh, the the development steps are, are really high. Yeah? And um, the abilities we get with the, with the new Wi-Fi standards, this is always it's always challenging and it's always a change. It's a constant change, and um, that is that is what 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 keeps us up, so to say. Um, it's not only waiting for the next standard, and uh, that's it. It's, 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 uh, it's uh, the, the integration of the wireless networks in, in, in existing networks with the fixed networks and all that. Um, the, the outdoor areas, um, the, the, the abilities we have in, let's say, large venues like, like uh, 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 malls or stadiums, um, that is something that is impossible with, with, with fixed networks. Yeah? And that is what, what, what uh, keeps my interest in the wireless area up. Yeah? I, like, I like that. You, you brought up a key word there, the integration. Um, you know, we all have a Wi-Fi access point at home. I have Wi-Fi. You, you do. We all do. Everyone, people listening to this webcast, they have a Wi-Fi access point at home. Um, but that's not what you're talking about. Right? You're talking about putting them together and integrating yes. them with, uh, so they work together, they roam correctly, uh, they support a large network and support the services on top of it. Uh, that's, that's a level of complexity that uh, is quite different than just your home um, router access point in your house. Right. So Will, in your, uh, in your commercial market, um, you know, some of, the, some of these medium to high rent uh, areas, where, do you, where are you seeing uh, the expectations change? Uh, what, what biggest changes have you guys seen in the last few years? You know, being in these high rent districts, that says a lot. These tenants are paying top dollar for top of the line equipment and satisfaction. So the expectations that these building owners have is high of their vendors and it's even higher from the tenants. So establishing places like cafes, uh, health centers, conference centers, amenity centers, outdoor patios, offering Wi-Fi and TV, you know, those systems need to be integrated. They need to be cyber secure. No one wants to be at a building uh, that was just hacked, right? Yeah. So all these different systems need to come together in a seamless manner and be best in class. It's it, it's an interesting uh, interesting change in dynamic. We, we, we wouldn't have thought about that. You know, yes. you sort of think about a commercial. You've, we've all been to commercial buildings. They added a cafe or you know health center for for uh, uh, for the employees for the people for the tenants. Um, you know, a nice coffee shop in the in the lobby is always a nice a nice touch. Yep. But really, it's it's really changing, hasn't it? Using technology more to enable, you know, touchless entry. That's an interesting, uh, interesting new technology change. Absolutely, they want you know that seamless integration. As I mentioned, they want to come into the garage in their car, not drop a cellular call. So that you need to have a DAS system or some sort of Wi-Fi calling capabilities. Yeah, the elevator needs to know what floor they're going to. They scan the badge through their phone. They go up straight to their floor. The lights turn on. Everything's there and ready to go. Wow, touchless technology. That's that's an interesting thing. So that all that all you guys actually do then not only deploy so that you're not going to get all that equipment from one vendor. You're going to have to get that from multiple sources, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You guys put put all that together and plug it into the network. Uh, that's nice. So everything can be done remotely. That that really does. Um, that really is very consistent with some things that I've been hearing, even from small enterprises. I know you guys are dealing a particular large rise, uh, large commercial buildings, but even small enterprises are telling me these days that they're, they are preparing now to open up. Many of them are opening up after the pandemic. Others are planning to open up later this year, but no matter whether they're in the middle of opening or they're still anticipating it a few more months, they're all looking at their network needs from that perspective, what you just kind of hit upon there, everything should be done remotely 
And that seems to be a common thread that I hear quite a bit, even if a small enterprise. And that could be something like a, a, even a, a church building. Uh, they want everything, if, if, I can, if I can log in and do it from the cloud, do it remotely, that's the way they want it to be done. And really that's about them preparing for, for, for a, a different future and different way to run their business. So we'll, you know, um, I, I guess, I'll, you know, we're talking with, uh, with, with Igor about Wi-Fi 6 and some of the stuff that it can do. Do, you, do your customers ask you for Wi-Fi 6 or are they asking for solutions or a technology? What are they, what kind of questions do you see? Uh, it's the solution. It's the tenant satisfaction. What's gonna make my end user have the best experience? Uh, they look to us as that trusted advisor. So no, we're not going to take the uh, firmware version dot one of the new Wi-Fi six access points and deploy them in a you know half a million dollar network and expect great things. We're going to have that all play out, understand the infrastructure and in, in the environment and how it works together uh, before deploying something like that. So we have the technology now; it works. Um, so we'll see what Wi-Fi 6 brings us. That's, that's, a, that's a good viewpoint. Uh, let, let's see what this new technology brings us um, mm -hmm. and, and keep that kind of a little bit of, a, you know, just a little bit of, con uh, not concern, but uh, caution. Keep a little bit of that caution and always in the case. So Igor, over to you in the, in the European market where you, where you focus, uh, are your customers there asking for Wi-Fi 6? Um, well, they're not specifically asking for Wi-Fi 6. I mean, uh, as a managed service provider, I think that's that's comparable around the world. Uh, our customers expect us to manage their service. Uh, so they are more focused on the service and not, not that much on the technology. They, they, they simply expect that we have either the newest technology or the best technology for the service suitable. And uh, I, I agree totally to Will. Um, uh, we as a service provider have the responsibility to have a stable service to our customers. So um, early adopters, yes, there are some people do ask specifically, okay, I always want the new stuff, yeah? but most of our customers um, uh, rely on that network. And that is, I think, um, coming back to the question, what, 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 what triggers Wi-Fi or why is Wi-Fi so important? I think um, a look in the past um, does, does, does give a different perspective. In, in, in earlier times, Wi-Fi was an add-on to a network. And most security engineers always denied using Wi-Fi because it was so insecure. We'll mention that the cybersecurity issues are, 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 are uh, I think, solved to, 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 to a level where nobody ever has to worry about um, insecure Wi-Fi networks nowadays. I think even today that the Wi-Fi network is more secure than the cable. Yeah? At least, at least from a security level, and um, uh, that has changed, and um, uh, that is what people expect. They want a secure service, and um, in in most enterprises, uh, the wireless has completely uh, uh, pushed back the the fixed networks. Yeah? Most users don't even connect their their laptop to a to 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 a, field, to a docking station anymore. Right. Sometimes to load it, but most of them just use it that way uh, over the wireless network. So that is important for them, not the newest standard, but a stable working environment. Yeah? Yeah. And that is, um, yeah. So they're that really looking. What we see at our customers, yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're really looking to you then to just like, like Will's talking about the US market, they're really coming to NetSys to really deliver that solution that has the right yes. customer experience. Yes. Yeah. So I, it's, I mean, it's quite interesting. The demand, the demand is rising. We are getting asked more and more uh, with, with, with new customers or, I mean, as a service provider, I think it's, it's, it's comparable. You have, a, you have a defined service contract, let's say 36 months, and that is over and it gets renewed. And, 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 and then customers, of course, ask, okay, uh, what about a hardware refresh? We have read or heard about Wi-Fi 6. Do you use that here? And, and, and all that. That is, that is the way we get, uh, we get Wi-Fi 6 at a customer. Yeah? But um, I haven't seen a single customer yet who is specifically specifically asking for for Wi-Fi six and nothing else. Yeah. You know, you know, ten years ago when eleven N came out, we, we used to have that. People used yeah. to ask for that. You know, they say, hey, yeah. "I want eleven N," uh, and then I want eleven AC. But I think it's 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 really showing the maturation, the maturing of this market, uh, where where it's really evolved. As you said, it's it's no longer an adjunct. Right, it's not just an extension off of a wired port. A wireless is now a primary, uh, primary network access for for most of these yeah. customers. You know, back um, as you're talking, um, Igor, I was just thinking a little bit. You know, back in the '70s, there used to be this expression: uh, 
that no one ever got fired. It's an American expression, so you don't have to laugh. Uh, <laughs> don't force it. Uh, mm -hmm. But but there's an old expression, American expression, that nobody ever got fired for buying IBM, which which was an expression that basically said that uh, you know you, you buy the technology, you may not be getting the right solution, but you buy the technology and the brand. Um, in the 1990s, Igor, kind of your time, you and I are probably about the same age. So in our time, in the night, you know, Will's younger, so he doesn't understand this. But uh, you know, in the 1990s, you could have said no one ever got fired for buying Cisco, and that's that was probably a fair statement at that time. Um, but boy, it sure has changed, hasn't it? It's really changed. The emphasis has changed from technology and brand now to um, deliver that service and that customer experience. So that's this. It's, it's been. I was just thinking of that as you're you were talking about this. Uh, certainly big changes, and I think the MSPs that uh, that Cambium talks to uh, are looking for the same things, the same experiences that you guys are. So you talked a little bit about, um, Igor, you talked about uh, about putting together this customer experience, focus on the customer experience. Will, you, you talked about some interesting things about integrating different technologies. You went through a whole list of them, building management systems, touchless technology, intelligent elevators, DAS systems, lots and lots of different things that have to be done there. So, Will, uh, it's kind of an off the, off the wall question here, but that, there's an old expression about being on the bleeding edge or the cutting edge. So, how do you how do you keep your customers or keep yourself on the cutting edge of new technology, but not necessarily the bleeding edge? That's a great question. Uh, so, my job is to put this converged building network, or at least capable of being converged building network, into place. Um, it's all IP based. So technically speaking, I'm not providing any touchless technologies, health scanners, infrared cameras. I'm having those plug into our cyber secure network. So essentially I don't have to be on that bleeding or cutting edge. Yes, as a building technology manager and needing to understand what is out there currently and what can offer the best solution to my clients and customers, I have to know. So. I'm in touch with that environment, but in terms of deploying this technology, yes, we see it all the time. Uh, we have it integrated into our networks. It's mainly coming in over Wi-Fi or some sort of you know one or two Cat6 cables back to a port, but most of it is on this wireless network solution. It's interesting, you, you had mentioned at the beginning of that answer there about, about really focusing on the security baseline and establishing a good security base and then plugging in systems into your into your secure infrastructure yes um and that, that that's, that's a good that's a good way to take it these days we hear a lot about security risks security vulnerabilities and uh new uh, uh threat vectors whether they're it's wireless or through the supply chain of the software uh so i think it, it, it you hit you hit upon a very good point the security you have to have a good baseline security business practice a good baseline of security before you start looking at integrating other solutions and, and technologies. So speaking about Wi-Fi networks, you, you both have done a good job of explaining to me uh, the value you bring indoors and Wi-Fi indoor networks. So where does the boundary stop for you? Will, where, where does the boundary edge of Wi-Fi stop? I don't know if we've reached a known boundary yet, Darren. Um, with the intelligent riser, I can extend the network via fiber or CAT6 um to further and further locations you know we're doing um exterior campus wi-fi right now our clients want to have uh, the capabilities to offer their tenants the ability to walk around the campus outside in a covid friendly environment and have that seamless meeting experience you know beyond zoom calls uh, we're, we're lighting up bocce ball courts exterior uh, we're doing point to points um connecting buildings that way when we can't trench through the street. Um, I don't say, I wouldn't say we're on a boundary. We're, we're just reaching new <laughs> limits every day. Wow, that, 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 that's a good answer. They haven't found, a, haven't found the boundary yet. I, I guess we should probably do a, a tourism announcement for, you know, city of San Francisco. It's a, <laughs> it, it's a great city to visit. Um, you know, I took my son down there at, uh, recently uh, to walk around the Embarcadero area. And we saw lots of uh, Montgomery, your, your company's networks actually deployed around, around the Embarcadero and some of those, uh, those key tourist areas that people like to visit. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, 
as, as things open up from the pandemic, you know, we cr- keep encouraging people to stay safe, but also uh, get out and breathe, uh, breathe new air. Uh, there's some new air out there. So <laughs> Igor, uh, I want to ask you, you know, your experience has been a, a little bit broader than mine, um, your background in carriers and different types of technologies. Um, if I don't use the word Wi-Fi, Igor, if I just say wireless, where do you, have you seen, what, what sort of boundaries are you seeing or what sort of outdoor wireless networks are you, are you operating in? Uh, well, we, we, we use also the, the, the wireless solutions for, for, um, for our customers where no cabling is possible or too expensive or for whatever reason, uh, maybe uh, sometimes there's a time, time issue. It takes too long for, for the construction works to do all that. So, so, so we build wireless connections. Um, the outer area, of course, uh, stadiums, I count that as an outer area as well. Um, I don't think we have any big boundaries. I think we are pushing the boundaries of, of wireless solutions every day a bit further away. The only thing I can imagine is the, the simple physics behind. Sometimes uh, we will reach uh, uh, wavelengths at some, t- at some point uh, where, where, where their reach is simply too short. And this, this may, may, may limit uh, wireless solutions of any kind. Yeah? And I don't think, I mean, if, if, if you go further, when, when, when we look at the, at the new solutions, um, the amount of access points uh, will rise. I don't. I don't see us having five or six APs in an in an area. I don't know, 50, 60 square feet. Um, that is something customers won't do yeah? because the speeds we reach nowadays. I mean, that is when I think about Bill Gates' uh, 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 word long ago, where he said 640 kilobytes is way enough for every PC. Um, yeah. So what I will say now might be wrong in 10 years, but uh, today I don't have the feeling that we will need uh, significantly more speed than we have today. And I mean, the boundary for me is always the fixed network, as long as and, and Wi-Fi is on, 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 on level with, with fixed networks nowadays. So that is, that is maybe um, a boundary. Yeah? As long as it's comparable or, or slightly above or below, I don't, I don't think there is a big issue. Yeah? Yeah. So, so boundary can mean, can mean, uh, you know, geographical boundary, you know, how far it goes. Uh, Boundary can be how fast it goes or, or boundary can be, you know, how many applications does it support or what types of applications. So have you guys had a chance uh, to, to play with the, the 60 gigahertz technology uh, recently? That's that's fairly new technology based on 802.11ay. Have you guys played with that much? Either one of you? Unfortunately, me, not yet. I've just seen it in the webinars and uh, read the product descriptions. So we will sooner or later, we'll get something here to, to play around with and see uh, how it works for us or our customers. Um, but good. As well, of today, no. <laughs> yeah, good. No, no, that, that's the fair. That's the right answer. I, I want I want straight. That's a good straight up answer for me, uh, Igor. So now I know I'll have to get you a get you a demo of that that equipment. <laughs> I, I think you're going to I think you're going to particularly like it, you know, because you, you're the you're the guy that you're the guy with all that experience, the background to uh, take a look at these this technology and to see those boundary conditions and mm-hmm. to see how they can be how they can be uh, they can be exceeded. Um, I've been looking at that lately. It's not really my portfolio. I'm on the enterprise Wi-Fi side, but actually when I look at the 60 gigahertz technology from an enterprise perspective, uh, I see it as a natural extension to the types of networks that I I would deploy or I would architect for indoor or even outdoor uh, because a lot of the installation is is very similar to what I would normally do with a Wi-Fi network. But, uh, and, and some of the, and also some of the protocols that 60 gigahertz uses, the things that I'm familiar with already. So I, I see it as a natural extension. Uh, what you're going to what you're going to find with that is a couple things you're going to see. Uh, one of the things you're going to see is that uh, you mentioned ego about wavelength. So the 60 gigahertz technology is is one twelfth. The wavelength is one twelfth the size of a five gigahertz, you know, uh, wavelength. The 60 you know, divided by five is about one twelfth the size. So it's very, very small wavelength, very tight. And that allows for tight beams uh, between nodes. And with that tight beam and beams steering those tight beams, and then additionally, we add synchronized transmission to those tight beams. Mm-hmm. We're actually creating a, a mesh network that exceeds about, we can get up to 7.2 gigabits per second over these tight beams, all using one channel operation in the same network. So I think that that's going to be, um, to me, when I look at uh, extending and finding the boundary of that Wi-Fi network, I see technology like 
technology like our 60 gigahertz product, actually, again, pushing that boundary out. You know, geographically, it's 200 meters, maybe 300 meters, which isn't that far geographically, but certainly pushing the boundary out in terms of speed, performance, and the applications that that we can support. I think that uh, that's going to be an interesting, uh, a new boundary, which is actually pr probably you could say it's a new, uh, it's a, it, it's an entirely new challenge for us uh, to uh, to take a look at. All right, now talking about the you know that wireless network and pushing that that boundary geographically or pushing the boundary in terms of application support. Um, we talked about the 60 gigahertz a little bit. Do either one of you use the uh, fixed wireless broadband to get greater range? For example, Cambia makes some stuff, but have, have you used fixed wireless broadband? Igor, is, is that something you've used in your market? That is uh, indeed something we use. Um, we have a variety of, of, uh, of solutions for our customers where we, where we accommodate your product. So uh, we use the, the, the PMP solutions. Uh, the PTP solution as the PTP 550 as well. So um, it just depends. I, I can't say uh, we have a favorite product. Uh, let's say we have we have a favorite product for a specific solution for a customer. Uh, if we want to just extend, as you just said, um, uh, if we want to link buildings without without uh, or simply to save money without having a big construction works, we use P2P solutions. If we have several buildings or sometimes even mobile solutions with moving. Uh, objects in an, in, a, in an open area, we use the PMP solution. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're, you're absolutely th it's the right answer there, Igor. You don't don't fall in love with technology, fall in love with the solution that it delivers. And if, it, if, if the technology makes the solution work, then it's it's the best technology you, you've uh, you've got. It's, it's good stuff. So so as we kind of get to the end here, I'll ask you just do you have any final thoughts on where you think the MSP market is going in terms of uh, delivering better outcomes for your customers? I think it's working with the solutions that we have, uh, the technology that we have, ensure that you know it is stable, it is steady, and it can offer that best end user experience for my clients. Um, I think that's where we wanna stay focused. Uh, we're, we're trusted. We have the solution that works today Yes, of course, we have to look to the future of all this, you know, the built environment with all this connection uh, speed, as well as um, many different endpoints being able to connect over wireless. So we have to keep that in mind and ensure that we get there at least one point in time. Excellent. Uh, I'm glad you guys are keeping that focus on uh, uh, the, the security basis and being that trusted advisor. Igor, any final uh, thoughts from you? Well, um, I think I think that market is 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 rising. Um, what what we notice here, uh, we talked about that a few a few minutes ago. Um, uh, what what makes a managed service provider, and what's what's uh, what's the reason for customers to go to managed service providers? I think most of or, or, or the majority of the customers do pay or rather pay a fee to a managed service provider than having to have the headaches headaches themselves. Yeah? That is something. Um, what is what is uh, what we notice is, is let's say it's some sort of trend. Um, the, the the managed services uh, in, in former times it was called outsourcing. Uh, today it's a managed service. You buy that you don't have to do to do on your own. You don't have to to have the staff uh, or the expert personnel, which is usually more expensive than the managed service itself. So that is that is what why, why companies here more and more switch to managed services rather than deploying them or running them themselves. Uh, all right. Well, thank you both for joining me. I appreciate our time today. It was a, a good discussion. Um, I, I appreciate your perspectives coming from different parts of the world, uh, attacking different types of markets, but so much still in common. And uh, you know, the best practices that you deliver are, are still a good common and, and deliver a, 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 an excellent outcome, an excellent result. So I appreciate your time today. And uh, you folks have a, have a good day. Igor, have a nice night and a good weekend too. Thank you. Thanks, you too. Sir. Thank you.